The Haunting is a... No, not that one. Not that one either. The Spanish The Haunting is a 2009 horror thriller written and directed by Elio Quiroga. The film follows a couple who move out to a countryside home that was previously owned by the church. Ghosts and ghouls begin to torment them, and a mystery is solved along the way. The film opens up with an introduction detailing what nodos are, which, yes, were a real thing. After that, we open up on a group of priests investigating an area. They find someone alive and transport her to a church-ran sanatorium. Let's hope these aren't the nuns from Sharp. After some time, she wakes up and... La última que queda en este ala. Apenas lleva cuatro semanas despierta y ya ha recuperado el tono muscular. Se vale por sí misma. Controla sus esfínteres. Okay, I don't know much Spanish outside of uno momento, por favor. So I watch the rest of the film with its dub. I'm sure I won't miss out on any of the acting nuances. So anyway, she wakes up after a time and is soon released. The priest who released her is Miguel, played by Hector Colomb, as the woman named Blanca, played by Maria Alfonso Rosso, walks away, a film reel falls to the floor. This gives Miguel some strange flashbacks. Cut to a hospital where a baby is dying, one dead baby baptism later, and we're at the home. The couple... Francesca and Pedro, played by Anna Torrent and Francisco Boira, are looking over the house. Meanwhile, Blanca makes her way home. Sindel. For a second, I thought I heard Blanca call out Sindel. Mortal Kombat vs. Street Fighter is confirmed. We get another short documentary segment before returning to Miguel, who is debating another priest about a whore and whether she did miracles or not. Whores don't make miracles happen. Exactly. The other priest is none too happy about Miguel keeping the film real. Do you want me to get excommunicated? Miguel! Calm down, we hint John Wick was killing the Pope, not you. We watch the family move in and be cute, but then one night... Okay, the first sound is passable as something falling, but the rest was clearly feet running on wood. Petro. What's the matter? Did you hear that? A noise. <sighs> what noise? From up there. There is no one up there, Francesca. Okay, now it's just becoming a comedy at this point. Pedro is none too happy that Francesca fell asleep next to their baby. As if that's not enough, we get even more from the couple's friend. You're still sleeping in the baby's room. I don't want anything bad to happen to him. And why do you think that something bad could happen to him? I'm sorry, but what is wrong with caring for one's baby? It isn't babying if it's still a baby. And what does that have to do with baptizing dead babies? Oh, that's a bitch move. You're a son of a bitch. She'll get over it. Thank you. Don't worry. Yep. Yeah, they're definitely having an affair. I have strange dreams. Really? I see weird things. Some dirty girls, and they're dirty and sad. Hey, now who let you watch Pedro's daddy only films? We get some more scares through the night, along with some ghost action. The neighbors go nuts on the door, and when Pedro walks in to see his wife frightened and near crying, he has the emotion of a plank of wood. Francesca. Things get cranked up a few notches as the ghost girls start tormenting the wife and surround her in black smoke. She comes to as Pedro and his clearly not having an affair friend state that the father is taking the baby to stay with his parents. Francesca scrapes off some of the blood writing and gives it to John, asking her to run some tests on it. Left alone, Francesca gets some face-to-face -face time with Blanca, who name-drops Miguel, as well as hints that there's something in the attic. She finds some ghost girls, as well as a Silent Hill monster.
Even she seems surprised at how pointless that fake CGI was. The blood test comes back, and it's not human. Meanwhile, Francesca reaches out to Miguel, who stops by to chant some lantern. <laughs> Pedro is none too happy about another man being around his wife. Don't you know? I'm the only one who can have an affair. However, the tapes have given some evidence to the ghost girls, and we learn that the Nodos made special ghost-finding film. After Blanca drops some info, we learn that there's an elemental in the house, and only a martyr can cleanse the house of it. We get another flashback of that horror bleeding out and learn she's been bleeding for weeks. Turns out the building was once a school, and the three girls have believed that they could see the Virgin Mary. Miguel and Francesca learn of a second camera, but find that the film has already been removed. They track down the film, which shows that the girls gathered a rather large crowd. Even if their miracles didn't help people and only made them worse. It would seem that they are at a dead end with no more film available, but it turns out Blanca has the remaining film. The couple go back to get their things, but the sight of their daughter, Rosa, lures Francesca in. Though Pedro is rather confused. Rosa, our daughter. You have a son. His name is Pablo and he's with my parents, remember? Rosa, my daughter! Rosa died! Ten years ago. The Elemental then takes out Pedro. <laughs> Meanwhile, Miguel and Blanca enjoy the full film while Francesca walks into it. It's revealed that the Catholic Church is to blame as they murdered the girls, Blanca's husband, and knocked Blanca out. Miguel gives Pedro a call. Miguel, it's, it's Pedro. Francesca's going mad. She says she can see our dead daughter. Pedro, listen to me carefully. Pay attention to everything that Francesca says. What she sees is real. Oh, and when I say real, I mean it's all tricked by a very angry and vengeful ghost. So don't go chasing down your ghost daughter. But of course they break into the room with all the bodies. What idiots. They needed martyrs to finish off this thing, but they forgot that to be a martyr, you have to want to be one. I mean, if the girls died believing in the fact they saw the Virgin Mary, then they did die as martyrs. Just not martyrs for the Catholics. They just say that someone needs to die a martyr, not what they were a martyr to. So Miguel does battle, or perhaps debate, with the Elemental, ultimately dying in the effort and burning the house down. It's all covered up, we get to see the cover-up version of the Three Girls documentary, and Pedro continued to cheat until he was caught and they divorced. Tracking down information on this film was a huge challenge. Not only does it carry a very generic name, but it doesn't seem to have many records. One big hurdle is that this film carries multiple names, not just two or three, but five. The Haunting, Nodo, Nodo with no dash in between that, The Beckoning, and Delictum. Another problem was that I got three release dates. It was released in Spain in 2009 and 2010 in the United States. However, pretty much everywhere else claims it came out in 2008. For as hard as it was to track down information, the film got nominated for 10 different awards from multiple film festivals, including Shriekfest. All of these awards were for the best film at different festivals. I don't know why. Don't get me wrong, it's a fine film played by competent actors. I will say that I find the Spanish actors to be much better than their voice acting counterparts, However, since I am not familiar with Spanish, you should take that with a grain of salt. There are two things I will give this film props for. The first is the ghost girls. While most of the CGI is poor or downright bad, I actually like the effects on the three girls. The best part of this film is easily the daughter twist. It's well done and hidden in ways that wouldn't catch our attention. This film does what I like about a good twist and actually hints or even outright tells us the outcome. However, it's done in a way that's so subtle we don't notice. Much like in, say, Fam of the Paradise, which told us the ending multiple times. She died 10 years ago, all right, Francesca? 10 years ago! But I'm gonna take the baby to go stay with my parents. I genuinely didn't question why he didn't mention his daughter or say kids. Also, the fact she worked at the hospital and is seen baptizing a dead child who isn't hers also enforces the idea she's just afraid from having seen babies die. Everything else is 
pretty meh. I didn't find the horror worked extremely well, but was serviceable. I actually have to applaud the film for really only having one jump scare. There are 300 shots in this film that use CGI, as well as 70 minutes worth of soundtrack. The entire film was shot in Spain, with various locations from Madrid to the Canary Islands. While this isn't the best foreign or even Spanish horror film I've seen, I would still suggest it if you are desperate for a ghost movie, or a movie that attempts to blend history and the supernatural. Many of the scares don't go anywhere, the CGI isn't that good, and for the most part the story isn't bad. Everything is done competently, and the ending is final. Unlike many other ghost movies of this quality, it doesn't sequel bait or have a got you ending. This is one haunting film that you can skip, but if you really want, you won't hate yourself for watching it. I actually had another haunting movie saying next to this one. I suppose it couldn't be that bad. It stars someone named Haley Bennett. And now, folks, it's time to say goodnight. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night. <laughs>